Um, I think to get straight into it, what everyone wants to know is since you're all at the top of what you do, how did you get there? And what was kind of your modus operandi for success? Let's start with you, Anne, if that's okay. Well, I started my own business in 1989, 1990, uh, so a different uh, route. But uh, I was working in recruitment. I was very passionate about working with people in the tech sector. I just really liked what they do. And I feel your career is right up there with your health, wealth, and happiness. So I wanted to specialise because most companies at that time were generous. So you'd be recruiting an accountant one day and a programmer the next, and I just wanted to focus on the tech sector. So that's really how I got started, and I literally put the desk and a phone and a copy of the golden pages, and away I went. <laughs> and Anne, as Orla said, we're blessed to have you among us, as you know, the only CEO we bow before you. But like you think in the tech industry, because it's a new, like there's two people in this room in my industry, Claire Dyden and Mary Curtis, they have broken through glass scenes because there are hardly any senior people actually, for instance in broadcasting in Ireland. But in tech, wouldn't you think that a lot of women would be right up there now? Yes, you would. And in fact, I think it is quite puzzling because one of the things that attracted me to the tech industry was that it is a meritocracy. But there are definitely issues because I was in uh, Silicon Valley in June and I was at one of these tech incubators. Three of 200 startups were by women, which really shocked me. Uh, so I was really asking, why is that the case? Because the, to me, Silicon Valley is a real meritocracy. All they want to know is how many the idea can you execute? And really, it was hard to get satisfactory answers. So I think it might be a generational thing. I'm hoping that this new generation coming through, because the tech sector is a brilliant uh, sector for women. Uh, and also, you know, you can set up a business on the global stage with the whole digital technology in terms of rising through the ranks of corporate life. I think it's very much um, about your skill set. And I suppose at this point I'd like to say that it's interesting that Enterprise Ireland have just released a fund specifically for women startups. And I think Jean from Enterprise Ireland is here in the room somewhere. And for anybody thinking of setting up uh, a business in the tech sector, I think it would be well worth their while talking to Jean. So there That's are right. opportunities coming through. I just think it, it may be to take this generation to bring it really through. Yeah. But um, in terms of advice, I suppose, for anyone here or younger women, if you want to try and get where you four have got. I would say value yourself. Really understand your worth. Understand the contribution you're making. Um, I would say in terms of um, the corporate environment, you know, take on the high-profile assignments. Um, understand how to promote yourself. And I, don't, I think women can be slow to self-promote. Uh, I think sometimes they think it's crass or whatever, but actually it's really about the facts and the evidence and talking about what you've done. And you've got to learn how to talk about what you've done in a way that you're comfortable with, but that your boss and other people know what you've done. And on behalf, actually that's a very good point that Sonia makes, and on behalf of your team, you know, it's, sometimes you might feel more comfortable about it if you feel you're doing it for the team, so, you know, but you really, it's, it's your job, actually, to promote yourself. And solidarity. But women, uh, there's clear evidence in a recruitment perspective that women only apply for jobs for which they have 90% of the skill set. If a man sees an advert, he, if he has around 50%, he can go for it. So or 10%. My, my, my advice to, to all the women here and all the women in technology is go for it. You don't, you know, you don't have to have everything that uh, someone is looking for on a job spec. You know, you need to be stretch. We need to stretch ourselves. So um, as, as, as the only CEO, you know, as I was saying earlier. When you look at the men, due to gatherings of other CEOs, what's the difference between you as a female CEO and your male equivalents? Are there differences, do you think? I don't think there are significant differences. I think at the CEO level or for any leader in a business, you face all the same characteristics. And actually, it drives me mad when people say, oh, the feminine traits are really important in leadership because they're the ones, you know, they're team-oriented, they're caring, all those things are really important. Uh, whereas the men are kind of tough and aggressive and go-getters. I actually think that's a real discrimination against women. I think every leader, male or female, needs to bring their male and female side to the organisation. And I think we've got to balance. It's about balance. You've got to balance both those skill sets, and we all have both.